Sometimes there's not much else you can say other than it's going bloody well. Roll the intro. Hello and welcome back to the NK Zagreb Save Cultured Left Foot here and it is going very well as I said in the intro. Um, what we've done is we've played uh, ahead a tiny little bit. We were last together for Besiktas at home. 4-0 win in the Champions League. Luzajovic getting to and Mateo Cabrera getting to. We followed that with a 3-2 win against Istra. Um, our holding midfielder got sent off on the 62nd minute. Luckily didn't really change the game because we were already 3-0 up. Cabrera getting a brace and Serge getting one uh, and they scored two goals either side of half time but didn't have enough to get a third. Then we went to Slaven Blupo and won 3-1. Cabrera, Zahovic and Arejo came in and then Krauj scored as a, a consolation for them in the 84th minute but again all going very very well. Then we had a great game against Marseille. Now I know we only scored through a penalty and Mosquera didn't have a very good game but Mosquera didn't have a very good game because he basically conceded, I think it was one goal from three shots on target, so didn't really have that much to do. But uh, it was actually, before this game, I had a big review of the tactics and stuff like that. And um, I went through it and I was like, I think, I well, basically I went through and watched every single goal we had conceded to see, how, uh, minus free kicks and penalties, to see how we conceded them um, and what was going wrong. And I decided that we need variation of tactics. We need different tactics when we play big teams to when we play, or big teams in a, and sort of medium teams away to when we're playing really shit teams at home and when we're playing teams that, you know, are a similar level, but I still think we can beat. So uh, we did. We went into the tactics and we got a 1 1 draw away at Marseille, which was incredible because it puts us second in the group, which is ridiculous. Um, then we went and played Osiek and we beat them 2 1 away from home. Again, employing one of the tactics we've designed. Mateo Cabrera getting a brace. Uh, Hadis Hadranovic, which is an amazing name, uh, got uh, their goal as well in that. Then we played Henchenke Gorica with a very rotated squad and got a 1-0 win away from home. Luka Zahovic coming on as a sub and getting the goal. Uh, and then we went away to Dynamo, played the new tactics that I've been talking about with the against the bigger teams away from home and got an outstanding 3-0 win. I mean, Alexandra Penna... I thrust him into this lineup. There's no other way of saying it. He is, he was not featured. He came on as a last minute sub in this game. Uh, didn't feature in that game. Didn't feature in that game. Didn't feature in that game. Um, oh, sorry, he did feature in that game. Coming on as a sub as a 6.5. But yeah, thrust into the limelight. And within one minute, he had scored. Uh, Parfait Guigon also came in and scored for us as well in the ninth minute. And then the 51st minute. Uh, we wrapped it up with another Pina goal. He got man of the match and two goals and an 8.8, .8, which was very, very nice. And today we take on Olympic Marseille and Hay Duke in the at home, but in two varying competitions. We find ourselves top of the league on goal difference by five goals or by results against Hay Duke, I think it might be actually, because we've beaten them, I think. Yes, we beat them 3-1 away from home. So that's why we're top of the table at the moment, which is very, very nice. Matching records all around, which is good to see. Good to see we're keeping up with the pace and we're still top of the league. And as mentioned, we currently sit second in our group in the Champions League. As predicted, everybody losing quite easily to Man City. Uh, we've drawn with Olympic Marseille and beaten Besiktas. So sort of put ourselves in the driving seat for it. Croatia Cup, um, we're still going through. We're not really taking that very seriously anymore because we don't really need to. Um... It's an interesting one. It probably I probably should to get silk and lots more silverware under my belt. But now we've won it once. I'm not that fussed to be honest. But uh, yeah, all in all, it's going pretty well. We've have we made any subs? I don't see why we would have done. We're not in January, so I don't, uh, subs as well. You know what I mean? Transfers. Um, let's have a little looky look. Uh, no, Pinas was the last one we bought in, and you had already seen that out going out. Uh, Joe Cooper, I think he you probably saw him on go out on loan. I'm not too sure if I even told you, but he's gone out on loan. He's quite highly regarded, but I don't think he'll ever really make it. The Termination 7, Natural Fitness 8 are never going to be good stats for people we want to perform at the biggest level. So without further ado, let's get into the game and go and play Olympic Marseille. Oh, I suppose that I should talk you through the tactics really, shouldn't I? So, right, we have the big team away tactic. It's very similar form, like structure-wise, to what we've played previously. We were four, one, two, two, one. Um, however, we go m more direct passing, higher tempo. We try and close them down a bit more. Uh, more urgency in closing down. Stay on our feet and use time to marking though. And we drop um, our defensive line. There's no offside trap, nothing like that. And we play balanced and and 
correct it as we go. Then we have the team 4-2-3-1. This is generally what we're going to be playing against teams who I think we can sort of beat, sort of similar level, um, give us a bit more attacking him to us. It's all about using the wings and getting um, Riveros up on the overlap on the left-hand side. And then we've got the 4-2-4, which is the formation we're going to use when we think we can beat teams really, really easily. And I think between these three formations, we've got the players to do it and we've got the ability to do it. That's what we're going to do. And I know this is a big team away. Olympic Marseille are still a much better team than us. So we're going to stick with this one for today. It's the formation we used against Dynamo uh, in the last game where we got a good win. So we need to go and pick our team. So I'll be back after the team has been picked. Okay, because I'm an idiot and I forgot to go through the lineups before the game, this is how we're lining up. Uh, Mosquera in goal, Havoj, Napoli, Veselinovic and Riveros at the back. De Silva, Musa and Arejo in the middle. Thiago, Arejo and Guigon are the wingers. And Cabrera starts up front in the pressing forward role, which will be slightly new to him. It is not something uh, he's ever really done before, but we like to go and basically put their defenders under pressure so they hit the ball long and our tall centre-backs can win the ball. That's pretty much the tactics that we're going for. Um, they do have Philippe Coutinho, and as you can see, giving up possession, but it's about taking our chances when we get them, and it falls to Arejo here from the throw, and he shoots over the bar on his left foot. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, this is the only formation we have which we voluntarily give up possession I, best, I guess is the best way to describe it and that's what we're doing in this game as Arejo flicks it on into Musa. Musa goes to Guigon Guigon comes forward, now we should look sort of over the top with a long ball like that and finds Rivera's ball across, looking for Cabrera, what a header that is, what a move I mean, it's direct it's not very pretty but it's my word is it effective against these teams because they're just not expecting us to do it, they're expecting us to Keep the ball, play it around a bit, but Rivera swings this in Cabrera with a great header, and he makes it 1 0 to NK Zagreb in the Champions League. And are we on for a bit of a a bit of a surprise here in the group? And are we gonna be potentially going through? I mean, even if we don't go through, we've put ourselves in a very good position to go into the Europa League from this spot. So we'll have to wait and see. So again, we've only played the like we've played what Man City once, Besiktas once. They've hit the bar, and uh, this will be the second game Olympic Marseille. So we are. This will be more than halfway through the group. So we are putting ourselves in a good position as Riveros throws it into Musa. Back to Riveros. He waits for the run for Cabrera but can't find him. And this is that's why we give up so much possession. But I don't mind it because our defensive structure is pretty damn good. So. When I was doing my tactical analysis, we'll just see how this plays out as Napoli gets a good header away. It falls to Cuisance, down to Luis Alberto. Luis Alberto is back to Cuisance again, into Coutinho. He normally likes a shot. Dupont, back to Coutinho. Coutinho looks to beat his man, gets to the edge of the box, lays it off to Nesoki, into Tuati. I think Marseille just aren't interested in hearing about my tactical changes, and they hit the bar. I mean, Mosquera dive very, very late then. Riveros plays out the line to Guigon. Is this going to carry on going when we hit him on the counter-attack? No. Basically, I was looking through the uh, all the goals we conceded. Like I said, a lot of them came from this. Uh, if we just go into our tactics here. This role here was basically pressuring the ball too much. So um, we've changed it to a defensive role. And we've changed it to not, not press as high up the pitch. So press less often, I think, is how it's described. But... Um, so that's what we're doing. So he holds his position a lot more and he just sort of shields the back four rather than going to press whoever's got the ball and leaving them open. And it seems to have made quite a big difference as Musa spreads it out on the right to Thiago Arejo. He hasn't got too many options with him, but he does try to feed it through to one uh, and they clear the ball away. That's a good header back into the path of Endai. Endai comes forward for Marseille, lays it off to Luis Alberto into Dupont. Dupont to Luis Alberto again, back to Dupont, playing their own little game. He's going to be put under pressure here by Musa into Tuati. Tuati goes long, and you can just see there'll always be someone here in front of the back four. At the moment, it's looking like it's Joshua Silva. As Alberto swings out, and Napoli gets it away. Falls to Coutinho. There's the shot, and it's over the bar. Um, I'm just going to give him a little bit of praise, because I think we are defending this quite well at the moment. Man City running absolute riot against P uh, Besiktas with a 5-0 lead which is ridiculous. Mosquera goes along with the ball. Something, again, we don't see too often from my teams with Zagreb, but when needs must, needs must. Guigon comes forward with it, cuts onto his right foot, gets a shot off just past the post. And we're just coming up to half-time now, and that should see us through. If we get through to half-time with a 1-0 win, I'll be very, very happy, and we do. And I'm very, very happy, which is really good. Um, passionately... 
or do I go calm? No, passionately. We're playing really well. Um, keep going and keep giving the fans a performance to cheer for. And then you weren't that bad, but you can still improve. I mean, I don't ever agree with that, but it seems to do the job. Get the game underway. We'll give them a little bit of praise again as the second half gets underway. And as long as um, Marseille don't score from this position, then I'm happy. And it doesn't look like they're going to, because it means my praise shout won't be in earnest at the wrong time. As uh, It looks like we've got a few poor performers out there. Arejo, Arejo and Guigon. The two wingers aren't really getting into the game. That goes to the back post and it's off the line for Havoj. What a great clearance. Cuisance puts it back across. Napoli heads it away. And Thiago Arejo looks to complete the clearance. Cabrera picks it up up to Guigon. Guigon lays it out on the right-hand side to Arejo. Are we going to do anything from this counter-attack? Arejo puts the ball in. Cabrera is throwing goal. He's got a score and he does. What a counter-attack. 2-0, Cabrera with a wonderful, wonderful counter-attack finish on that goal. That was incredible. From off the line, from our defensive corner, up the other end. Where was the Marseille mark in here? It's a lovely ball through. Cabrera took a touch which deceived the goalkeeper and then just sticks it in the bottom corner. And this is an absolutely incredible performance. We're going to do a, uh, going to do a sub, that's what I'll say. Zahovic is going to come on for Guigan in that um, inside forward role. And we'll go from there. I mean, we are really really sort of taking the piss here as I said this formation is built to give up possession so we can hit teams on the counter attack and my word is it working Zahovic brings that header down from Cabrera back into his feet Cabrera still comes forward lays it back to Riveros into Zahovic Zahovic into Arejo into Musa Musa into Cabrera who's now on a hat-trick shoot just over the bar and uh, he's relishing the pressuring forward role to be honest two goals in this game and he's playing very very well now we just need to keep an eye on this and make sure that everything we're doing is going well. We could do a Rejo for Surge. I think that might be the next one to do. I could also do a Rejo for Tu and Zabi and bring on an even more defensive player in that role. I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a Rejo for Tu and Zabi and then swap these two over and swap those two over because then Abdel Moose is playing in his uh, more natural position in the middle. Josh De Silva can do literally everything in midfield, so I'm not too fussed about having him playing slightly out of position. Now, Tuan Zabi, as a more defensive player in that hold midfield role, should, should keep it a lot tighter. Um, there'll be no ounce in his body asking him to run up the pitch at full pelt. He likes to bring it out from the back, but he should be already there anyway. And it looks like we're going to be on for a win, as Man City, I think, have just scored their ninth goal against Besiktas, so... Maybe I overrated Besiktas. As Cabrera could be in for his hat-trick. He gets past the last man. Fires it just past the post. So unlucky. Zahovic with the ball over the top. And um, this is incredible if we hold on to this. Two and Zabi lays it back to Napoli. Outride to Arejo. I think we've actually got Marseille squared. Into De Silva. De Silva into Cabrera. Does get his hat-trick. He's offside. Oh, he's offside. So unlucky. Matteo Cabrera. As, uh, he's in again here. Good tackle from the defender. And that will go out. And that may well be the final act of the game. There's 20 seconds left and we do not need to rush this. Havoj just taking his time into Musa. Musa tries to put it across. Wins the corner. And with 10 seconds to go, I think this is going to be game, set and match. And that will put us five points clear of Olympic Marseille in the group. And there it is. He takes it into Havoj. Havoj lays it back to Zahovic who gets a shot off. Puts it past the post. Two and Zabi's offside anyway. But that should be the game. And it is. Get in there, boys. We are on a roll at the moment with this, um, with these new formations. Very, very special. I am absolutely delighted. Um, wow. What, another 2.42 million. Uh, let's attend this one. We're going to attend this one. Um, Muscor is a top quality goalkeeper. Uh, he was absolutely terrific today. The referee. My first thing, the referee decision was the right one. I'm not even going to argue. Cabrera on form with two goals, three key headers, and he was superb in front of goal. Now, in three days' time, we're going to be taking on Hey Duke for the top of the table clash in the Croatian First Division, and that is a tough game. Now, I've got a choice about what formation we use. Do I stick with that one, or do I mix it up to a bit more of an attacking one? I think it's been so effective against... Marseille and Dynamo. I think I'm going to stick with it and we'll see how it goes. But we'll be back for that game. See you in a bit. Okay, so here we go. We have stuck with the same formation 
and the only difference is that Zahovic comes in for a bit more experience instead of Grigon who drops to the bench but other than that it's the same starting 11. People are slightly tired but the day's rest did help. We've got to watch out for Stoyak. He is their playmaker according to my scouts and the data analysis team so we're going to be uh, pressing him when he gets the ball. Maybe marking him tightly I'm not too sure. We're going to ask um, to give a performance for the fans again and we're going to go with a lot more to come. Now we are at home again and the home fans have done us well this season which has been good um stoyak is who they said would be there um let's we'll just go and press him and we'll tackle him hard so that he can't get his shots away saltido we want to show him onto his i don't know i don't want to do anything with that really um but i do want to tackle him hard because he is their best player We'll go just with that in a moment into the tunnel. We can expect, uh, we'll, we'll look to seek the initiative straight from kickoff. I'm still in my wonderful suit with my really white brownish trainers, which look absolutely horrible. I mean, shoes, not trainers, obviously. But if we can go into the international break with a three point lead at the top of the table, that would be absolutely wonderful. Now, expect us to give up possession again. I might change to a formation where we have a bit more of the ball. Hey, Duke, a good. I still don't think Dynamo have just had a terrible start to the season. I think it is. I think Dynamo is still the best team in Croatia, although the table wouldn't show that. But I think we need to be more worried about them in a game than um, than Hey Duke really. But we're going to stick with this formation because again, a draw isn't the worst result. It does keep us at the top of the table. So yeah, we'll have to we'll have to see what happens. But 25 minutes gone, not even a highlight, which is. Always a little bit worrying when that happens because then you normally get one highlight and it's the first highlight and it's a goal and it'll be for them and it's very annoying. Uh, also, Sharife up front for them. We were interested in signing him. Uh, he moved to Hayduk and then we gave him his international debut for Albania. Is that a penalty? No, outside the box, which is good. Tiago Arejo is a lucky, lucky boy, but it's a dangerous position. Saltido, he is their best player. Fires in across. Veselovic clears and Mosquera touches the ball over the bar. Which is very nice indeed. I think we are going to change formation, I think, at half time. Arejo, is that a penalty? No, bloody hell. I thought we'd given away um, another dangerous set piece. Let's demand a little bit more. We've been asking them to get creative this time. Demand more. That's what we That's what we want from you. As you can see, tiredness is taking a little effect. Zahovic not getting in the game. Arejo not getting in the game. I think we're going to go to the 4-2-3-1 uh, formation at half time and just put the impetus back on us to be the difference. We are at home, the fans will be expecting us to be a bit better than what we're doing here. Assertively, I'm not happy with the performance. Tactically, what can we do then? We want to go to this one here. Cabrera, Zahovic, De Silva. Is De Silva the man to come off? How's he playing? 6.7. Rivera's on a 6.8. We'll take off, I think we're going to take off Musa actually. Um, we'll put Arejo over there, we'll take Musa off. Musa can come off for Krismanic in the middle. Not Krismanic, because is it Krismanic? Or is he the left midfielder? No, yeah, Krismanic. Who's the left midfielder? Knezovic is the left midfielder, not on the bench. Don't worry about him, Dave. He's not even playing. Um, and I think we'll go from there. We'll just do the one sub. We'll give Zahovic a little bit longer. And we'll see how this goes. Again, so ups it to positive. It's going to hopefully get us to control the ball a little bit more. Um, and hopefully that will work in our favour. Now... We've got to keep an eye on Zahovic. That's the one we need to keep an eye on. So Tito fires a free kick from range. It goes over the bar. Not too much to worry about. Um, but yeah. Again, a draw is not too bad. You can see we're creeping back up in possession stats now. A voyage into De Silva. De Silva gets a bit of space. Lays it back to Klismanic, interestingly. Gets it onto his left foot. Arejo, De Silva. He's got lots of space for Cabrera. Cabrera's pulled left. Puts a cross in. Tiago Arejo, it's saved. And then is that a penalty? No, it's a good tackle. Oh, and already we're... We created a good chance there. I think we are going to do uh, Zahovic off for Grigon. Basically, it's going to be the opposite substitution that we used in the last game. Will it have a similar impact? Zahovic getting, nearly getting an assist in that one. We have got a surge that can come on for Arejo, uh, for one of the midfielders, or Arejo can come off and be replaced by nobody. I don't think we've got another right winger on the bench, but they've made all three subs. They're obviously... Blinking first. Maybe we'll follow them soon. Havoj. Throw in to De Silva. De Silva to Klismanic. Gets a shot off and it's in. It's in. And we have the lead. And that's very, very nice indeed. That is nice because that would give us a three-point advantage at the top. Havoj with a throw in to De Silva. I don't know why the computer is so bad at marking people up from throw-ins. But it really, really is. <laughs> it really is. But 
Now we need to control the possession, and I think I am going to take Arejo off for someone. I just don't know who. Maybe we'll just shove Pina out there, like that. I know he can't really do it, but he's young, he's got pace. He's a, well, he's a good player, I think. Um, yeah, that's who we go for. They're fired up by the praise I give them, which is good. Only 10 minutes to go. I'm just wondering if we change anything. They're still playing the same formation. They haven't really, they've gone 3-5, I don't know, 3 4 two, one, I think they're playing now. Yeah, 3 4 two, one. Ball in. Ersteg's got space at the back post. He crashes it against the bar. And Hervage just gets it away. We're going to drop down to, to balanced. We're going to go into our out of possession play. We're going to drop our line a little bit more. Be a bit less urgent. We'll stay on our feet. I'm wondering if we we have got personnel on to allow us to go back to the more defensive sort of formation and just see the, well we'll see what happens with this corner because there's no point in doing the changes if they score from the corners. Delgado keeps it alive. His cross is blocked. Tries to put it back in. It falls to Bulba and they do score from the corner. Man that's annoying. Team instructions back to what we were like that. We'll get stuck in. A bit more pressing. That is really, really annoying because we were playing well. We were playing well. That makes it 1-1 and back to equal at the top of the table. But a bit of a shame, really. And Delgado's first cross was blocked. Second cross picked out Bulbo and just he let it bounce and then hit it on the half volley. And it's a good finish. Pretty poor defending, though, if we're honest. And they have another corner. Erseg swings it in. Don't tell me that's a penalty. It's given the penalty in the 91st minute. Come on, Mosquera. Big save. Vicario. Oh, Mosquera saved it. He saved it and held it and everything. Oh, yes, Mosquera. That is what we needed. And Guigon, we have a free kick at the other end. He shoots and it didn't get enough whip on it. And that's going to be that. I'll take 1-1. One, one. It keeps us top of the table as we go into the international break. Oh, Mosquera saving a 91st minute penalty. I'm happy. Oh, crap. I shouldn't have said that. Uh, hand over to assistant. Get out of here. Get out of here quickly. Well, there you go. They obviously think we should be expected to beat Heyduk quite easily. And maybe I overestimated Heyduk a little bit. Maybe we should have gone a bit more attacking from the off. But you don't win all the battles, do you? You, you have a few questionable decisions made. But it was a decent performance. We'll send the assistant to that one. Uh, Versanovic is now one appearance away from getting a uh, increase to 5,500, which... In essence, I'm not too fussed about because he's going to play loads of games for us this season. Right, schedule. We do have Man City at home. Now, I think that's going to be an absolute rollicking, but I did say we play all of our home games, so I guess we'll be back for Man City in a little quick one-off episode in the next game, and that'll be it. So we'll play one game offline against Rijeka. Oh, five home games in a month. That's quite rare. Um, and then it'll be Man City, and if we've already qualified from the group which I can't imagine we would have done because I assume you've got to assume Man City will beat us hang on if Man City beat us and Besiktas beat Olympic Marseille no we can still get knocked out because it put them on four but our goal difference would be okay depending that we don't get absolutely hammered which we will by Man City it's all to play for I highly doubt we're going to be able to nick a result against Man City if we do if we get a draw we're through which is ridiculous when you think about it utterly utterly ridiculous i don't think we will get a draw because they've smashed everybody in their way but we're playing well the formations appear to be working we've got a good squad um we've got decent players on loan who i think we're going to try and sign permanently as soon as our budgets get announced after this season but there's a long way to go we're not even in january yet but it's going well let me know down below what you think we should do moving forward what do you think of the new tactics what do you think in the fact that i've analyzed everything like a bit of a loser um hopefully it does show that it's coming off in the thing i don't really go too in depth with the tactical analysis i don't think you guys really want to see that you're more interested in the transfers and the games which is fine which is what i like showing you but yeah i'm rambling for now i'm out cheers thank you very much for watching i forgot to say that and if you want to be a patreon descriptions in the thing below the links in the description below and the merchandise and twitter and all of that good stuff for now i'm out cheers <laughs>